In this unit, we look at how alcohols are metabolized by the body and try to tie that into why some alcohols, such as ethanol, are relatively safe to consume in reasonable quantities, whereas others, such as methanol, are super duper toxic. So let's take a look at the chemistry behind those observations that answer the question of why is methanol extremely toxic, even in relatively small quantities, where ethanol in reasonable quantities is um, relatively harmless, relatively non-toxic. So to chip away at why ethanol is so much less toxic to the body than methanol, we have to look at what reactions occur once ethanol is in the body. So we'll go ahead and take the ethanol molecule, and what happens once it enters the body and starts being metabolized is it's going to come in contact with a group of enzymes that the body produces referred to as alcohol dehydrogenases. So as the name dehydrogenase implies, we think of that as removing hydrogen atoms. And in other words, what is going to happen is that the alcohol dehydrogenase by removing hydrogen atoms is going to oxidize the alcohol molecule. And the first thing it's going to oxidize the alcohol molecule to is this two carbon aldehyde. So we go back to that typical oxidation chemistry here, but in this case, our reagent that's carrying out the reaction is the alcohol dehydrogenase. So that's the catalyst of the reaction, the enzyme that is greatly speeding up the body's conversion of ethanol starting material into our aldehyde product. And this particular two carbon aldehyde product is referred to as acetaldehyde. Acetaldehyde is noteworthy because once this oxidation reaction takes place, this is the molecule that causes some of the traditional hangover effects. So effects of acetaldehyde include such things as headaches, nausea, et cetera, et cetera, the things that are generally associated with the dreaded hangover. So why does the hangover go away? Well, the body has another enzyme present that is able to take that acetaldehyde and further oxidize it. So the enzyme that catalyzes the further conversion of the aldehyde molecule is going to be referred to as an aldehyde dehydrogenase. So the names here aren't extremely clever because the alcohol dehydrogenase, as we noticed, took an alcohol and oxidized it. Aldehyde dehydrogenase takes an aldehyde starting material and removes hydrogens from that to oxidize it, in other words. So once we oxidize the aldehyde, we get that expected product corresponding to replacing the carbon-hydrogen bond that is available in acetaldehyde with a carbon-oxygen bond to enable us to achieve the final product of this reaction, which is a two-carbon carboxylic acid, most commonly known as acetic acid. And you may recognize the term acetic acid as the component that gives vinegar its distinct properties. And so acetic acid certainly in any reasonable quantity we recognize as not being particularly toxic. And furthermore, as we go from the alcohol to the acetic acid product, we would expect acetic acid to be more polar than the alcohol because of the fact that we have more oxygen atom, more polar bonds in there, and therefore the acetic acid is very readily removed from the body through the kidneys excreted in the urine. And so this is the pathway for alcohol uh, dehydrogenation or alcohol oxidation as a synonym for that, with ethanol as our example molecule. What if we did the same reaction instead with methanol? Methanol is a traditional antifreeze substance it apparently has a relatively sweet taste. I would not recommend trying that, but the problem with that relatively sweet taste is that sometimes kids or pets can get a hold of methanol and the consequences can be deadly. So why is methanol so much more toxic than ethanol? Let's take a look at the chemistry of that. So the alcohol dehydrogenase and aldehyde dehydrogenase are not particularly high specificity enzymes meaning that they catalyze a variety of different reactions with alcohol starting materials. And so what happens is when a person or an animal consumes methanol, the alcohol dehydrogenase that worked up there for the ethanol goes to work on the methanol molecule. So we take our alcohol dehydrogenase, bring that in, and it's going to oxidize the methanol molecule to an aldehyde. That aldehyde is going to be a one carbon aldehyde so we make our one carbon aldehyde molecule here. And that one carbon aldehyde is referred to as formaldehyde, which perhaps you recognize that name from some biology class along the way. And when you use formaldehyde, we typically use formaldehyde as a preservative. So we use it to prevent the growth of microbes and things in preserved tissues. And as you might expect, 
formaldehyde is super duper toxic. So it's not really the methanol itself that's a problem. It's the product that results from oxidizing methanol because we end up getting formaldehyde out of that, which is extremely toxic to a variety of internal organs. And then you might be saying to yourself, well, what about the aldehyde dehydrogenase that we saw up there that would take the acetaldehyde and convert it to acetic acid? Could we do something like that here to maybe detoxify the formaldehyde? Could we quickly treat it with the aldehyde dehydrogenase in the body to get us home free and minimize damage to the body? Well, what happens when we oxidize formaldehyde is that in creating that new carbon oxygen bond, that's the hallmark of oxidation, we end up creating as the product of that reaction, this molecule, a one carbon carboxylic acid. And the name that this most commonly goes by is the name formic acid. The name formic acid may also sound familiar to you because this is the compound that's produced by fire ants that allows them to exert massive stings. So you can imagine that having formic acid accumulating within your internal organs would be a really, really bad thing to occur. And so you're essentially burning yourself from the inside out if you've consumed methanol. And so as a consequence of all of this, ethanol is a lot less toxic than methanol because of the metabolism that goes on for these two different compounds giving way to products of these reactions that are either relatively non-toxic except for maybe the hangover, or extremely toxic, meaning formaldehyde and formic acid. So you might ask yourself here, what is the solution? If someone consumes methanol, how do physicians deal with that issue? Well, the way they deal with it is actually kind of interesting and somewhat surprising, and that is they provide the patient with diluted infusions of ethanol. Because what's going to happen if the patient that's had methanol poisoning is then fed with ethanol? The ethanol is going to end up swamping the alcohol dehydrogenase enzyme, and therefore the alcohol dehydrogenase enzyme won't be able to act on the methanol. And so as a result of that, the kidneys will hopefully have time to excrete the methanol as methanol starting material before that methanol has a chance to get oxidized to the more toxic formaldehyde and formic acid products.